Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. Today, we have a Merlot from a wine kit um, that we started in, I want to say, early February. Um, and essentially, there's trub on the bottom or yeast, fallout, particles, protein, everything that's been taken out. We're going to basically move it over to here, which is a bucket, bottling bucket, bucket. Then we're going to move it again, but we're going to move it through a filter. And we'll do that a little later in this video. Um, most of the time we do beer, but sometimes we get bored and mead, kombucha, red wine, white wine. Um, we've already done a Chardonnay and a Australian Chardonnay, California Chardonnay. Um, this one is a California Merlot. Um, it's one of the Vintners kits and let's transfer it. And we're going to try to transfer it while minimizing any kind of bubbling or excess mixing. Um, and also missing out on getting the trub in the bottom, of course. Take this, it's a pump, and right now it's got water in it, and what we've done is basically just kept moving water through it. Getting all the air out, move it over here, stick it in here. Whoa, whoa, Nelly. Okay, so we're gonna have to slowly lower this or the wine's gonna pour over the top. Okay, and I just sprayed wine. Yay! So now we're going to move that in here, and we can lower the stick. Hold on. And I'll lower this a little so you might be able to see. I'm going to aerate it a little bit in the beginning. Not something we're looking to do. Sadly, the pump moves a little faster than if I just primed it with one of the hand systems. But now that it's under, we're fine. We'll reduce the amount of oxygen going in. The reason we're moving it to the bucket before we um, move it to another container is we want to basically allow it to filter through a gravity system. The gravity system is going to be a lot easier. If I tried to pump it, I would, it the filter wouldn't work. We'd end up with a huge mess. Way too much liquid, way too fast. The problem with red, red wine, you can't see where you're at, at all. Might as well be black wine. Now, I do see it fairly, but I can see it. Oh, that's considerably lower than what I had again. Good. Oh, it's really bad. Pump. Okay, we had a little oops. Um, just like I said, you gotta watch this so it doesn't go flying out. Um, so we'll turn this into a little bit of a free ad for PBW. If you get red wine on white bricks, like I did, and pretty much all over the floor, like I did, and other material, I tried star sand, I tried different soaps really quick. This stuff kills organics. It basically breaks the organics down pretty much instantly. Um, so the white bricks look more white than they've probably been in a long time. Um, but yeah, that took care of the problem very quickly. And now we're going to continue pumping this over here. Now you understand why I probably always have paper towels on me. Um, but PBW, little PBW, little hot water, some paper towels, did magic. Literally magic, because red wine is pretty much the wine, like I just joked. If you're going to spill some, it's going to be red wine. And then I turn around and did it myself. Um, guaranteed mess, guaranteed staining, but PBW seemed to break the guarantee on the staining. Here we go. You may notice I put this little lever over here to kind of keep the hose from moving. It's still moving, so I'm going to have to just keep holding on to it. Now I understand why a lot of people have clamps. I'll have to get a clamp on there. Pause. I'm going to see if I can get a clamp now. There's a clamp. We have a clamp. And just like with beer, when you're transferring this, you're going to want to tip it. You can get as much of the wine as you can, just like you do with the beer. Just be careful not to get anything that's already been pulled out of suspension or the yeast cake or shrub particulates. And it's funny too, when you make a mess like that, you're always like, oh my God, my wife's going to kill me. I never hear ladies going, oh my God, my husband's going to kill me. So maybe we're just more fussy. 
I already see a little bit of the stuff from the bottom down there. Oh, and we got a little air. No big deal. We'll filter that out. And that's it. Okay, we're going to filter the wine using a kit that some idiot put a sign over the front. But it's called basically Vinbright Wine Filter Kit. Less than 40 bucks on Amazon. Um, beer, wine, resellers, supply shops should have it for about the same price. Comes with fine premium, which is ultra fine, and coarse. Talking about five microns, one micron, and half a micron. We've done the half micron. Um, actually, let me say that again. Nope, premium is one micron. Coarse is five microns. Fine is half a micron. We're not doing half micron again. That was very painful. It took hours to filter the wine, over an hour. Um, we're gonna go with one micron. And then what I've done is I've made some modifications. This is the system. And essentially I've already star sand, rinsed it down. And all you're gonna do is simply take the filter. Oops, I don't drop everything. Open the bag. Take one filter out. So it's to rinse it with water, star sand. Um, I'm going with the sterile word there. So we're gonna take this, and set this here, set this in here. And this thing kind of locks in place. It's about impossible to see on the camera because I can barely see it with my eyes. It's got tiny, tiny little plastic notches. Okay, It's not a perfect system, but for under $40 compared to $148 that I've seen other filter systems um, for wine, this is beautiful. It's a gravity fed type system. And there we go. And it comes with a cool little plastic wrench that you can actually take it and snug it up. I just did it with my hands and it's just tight enough. Put this on here. My modifications are I heat straightened the tube. I'm going to put this in here as the bottom. What it's going to do is allow the wine juice to hit the bottom or the wine um, and less aeration. It's not going to just fall and create a lot of aeration. Um, that's going to help a lot. And one other thing, this thing will leak sometimes, so I'll set it at an angle. Give me a second to adjust the camera and I'll let you see. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna take this, stick it in here. It should be a little snug, push it up a little ways, and literally just set it in there. This is gonna go into the top, just like that, nice and snug. I tighten this on just to be safe. Um, here's the key, and let's see if we can get it to set up that way. A little bit of pain, get it just right. What'll happen is it'll start leaking. The wine will go around the edges and drip down the back. I'm okay with that. So we're gonna turn it on nice and slow. This allows the excess air to get out. We're gonna leave it open. Here we go, we're gonna turn it open nice and slow. It can always increase. And there it goes, it's flowing. And there we go, we got a nice flow going. Some air bubbles, which this helps to reduce those air bubbles. This is going to shoot up and almost explode out of here, so I'm going to give it a second. And there it goes. And just as I put my finger on it, and it's sealed. And the wine's flowing. Let's see if I can get a good angle on that. And the wine's flowing. This is gonna take probably anywhere from 45 minutes to maybe as much as an hour. So I'll come back when we get towards the end. As you can see, this is the back of the filter. About what it would look like with just some red wine, no filtering. That's the side that was filtered. So lots of, I guess you call it bits and pieces. And this is the finished wine, which we will be bottling here very shortly. Okay, although we had a huge mess and a major issue, we're just a hair below five gallons, so we probably will get the majority of our bottles bottled. Um, I always sterilize 31 in hopes we get all 30, but that way I have a last bottle to just let any excess flow. Um, but we're probably gonna get 29 and a half if I had to guess, or somewhere around that 
mark. Not a big deal. I tried it already. It tastes great. A um, little on the hot side, which will, that's the alcohol. It'll kind of age out after a few months and it won't be noticeable. Um, on top of that, we have our corks, which I did not soak them. I sterilized them with star sand, put them in warm water with star sand for a couple minutes, took them out, dry them off. You do not want to soak them or steam them. Otherwise, they're going to swell and allow moisture to get into your wine if you're using something like a Portuguese corker as it will squeeze the cork and any other type of corker like that or this little thing. If you use this little thing and you can shove a cork through that little hole, you're either Hercules or you have something most people don't in strength. I've tried it. It's insane. This thing's like two bucks. Don't waste your money. This thing's like 12 bucks. It does a good job, but it destroys and damages the tops of the corks. Um, it shoves it through this little metal piece. It seems very easy, but after you destroy enough corks, you realize it was a waste of your time. This thing retails for about 60 bucks, and it quite literally squeezes the cork and then pushes it into the bottle. This piece moves up and down, but when the bottle's on it and you start moving it, it locks. So you don't have to worry about the bottle moving. Okay, let's bottle some wine. What we've done is set this up and we've gone down here. Recommendation, if you're in Florida, you have a beach towel. If you're not, hopefully you have a beach towel. You want something dark that's not gonna show red wine if it dribbles, because you're going to dribble some of the wine between bottles, it's gonna happen. Um, Chardonnay, any kind of white wine's not really gonna show. Red wine will definitely show. Um, and basically it's just a gravity feed system. We have a small tip on here. When we press the tip, it'll allow the liquid to flow. When we pull it up, it'll stop. This is Saran wrap, basically, that I've put on here. Um, these things fall off. They, I've yet to find one where they stay on nice and snug over time. That actually helps to snug it up. And that's it. And we'll let's bottle some wine. Okay, here we go. Simply take this little thing I put on here to hold it from falling. It's already been start. As you can see, a little bit of liquid from star sand and water. Just cleaning it. And we'll go right here in the middle. Just, eh, what the hell? We'll start in the corner. And we open up the valve nice and slow. Make sure we don't have any problems. And there we go. It's flowing. Don't have to, don't have to open it full. Um, the better thing is to keep your eye on the bottle. Trust me, we've learned the hard way. Done it too many times with beer, mm. once or twice with wine. Okay, and we let it go almost to the top. There we go, and as we pull this out, it's gonna let some liquid out. I feel it lets a little too much out. So a good trick is take your cork, look, see where it's gonna be. Put just a little bit more in there, be about a finger and a half or so between the top. So we're literally, you can see, And then we do the next one. And once we fill this one, I'm going to cork one so you can see the corking. Portuguese corkers are, I want to say, about 60 bucks if I remember right. Um, just don't learn the hard way like most people, like myself included. Spend a little extra money, get the right kind of corker, and don't waste your time. And save yourself a lot of hassle. Okay, we're gonna pause for a minute, make sure that's not touching anything, because if it touches it, the tip, it'll start pouring. Okay, let's take this, put the floor corker right here. Push down, set your bottle on top. The tip will go up under here. Star sand, a little moisture up under there to keep it clean. You literally set your cork in here like that. It squeezes it and you push down pull up push down pull up okay as you can see it does perfect it's almost flush this is going to sit upright four to five days and then it's going to get laid down like this on its side for the rest of the time um this probably will not last a year easily um it will get drank way before that um, does have a little bit of natural nitrates and preservatives in there, but 
There's a nice red wine. Let's bottle some more. And the last one. Perfect. Some of the ones I did earlier this year, um, starting in December, oak aged California Chardonnay on American medium toast, oak aged Australian medium toast Chardonnay. See it's green bottle, white wine, clear bottle, white wine. And now what we bottled today, American oak aged California Merlot. Um, this is like a hundred dollar kit that came with a, about 24 bottles. I had to buy some extra bottles. I actually did 30 bottles, shockingly. Um, and I thought it was a little on the hot side at first, but actually tasting it, this is some of the best Merlot I've had in a while. Um, really, really good. And no, I don't buy crazy expensive Merlot. I buy inexpensive, probably $20 is my price limit. Usually I like to go anywhere between five and 10 bucks if I can. Excellent. Thank you again for joining us on Bitter Reality Brewing.